Hell was let loose yesterday in Oweri, the capital of Imo State, as unknown gunmen went on rampage, burning down several vehicles at the police command headquarters before overwhelming security at the Nigerian Correctional Center, where they set free close to 2,000 inmates. This has been causing ripples through the political establishment in the state, while deepening fear among residents of the state. Joining us now to assess how much damage that has been done and how much more could be in the offering, not just in Imo State, but the rest of the Southeast geopolitical zone, is Dr. Chima Naji, a lawyer, politician, public affairs analyst, and leader of thought in the Southeast of Nigeria. Dr. Naji, good morning. Good to have you again on the morning show. A very good morning, uh, Ruben. Good morning. The fact of the jury, Ruben. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, the indefatigable uh, Rufai. Thank you. And morning, of course, uh, Victoria in Feline Grace. <laughs> good morning, sir. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Well, Glad to be here. Yes, thank, thank you, you for joining us. Well, very some well. of the papers uh, today are talking about mayhem in Emo. The details are quite uh, graphic. Uh, this day has the details on its front page. 1,844 inmates freed at the Correctional Center. Um, the president says this is an act of uh, terrorism. Since uh, the weekend, persons have been killed. Uh, in uh, in uh, neighboring states, Governor Ikweazu has imposed a uh, curfew in Umuaya and uh, Aba. The uh, Inspector General of Police is blaming iPod and the Eastern Security Network. IPOP says no, it's a peaceful organization, it has no hand in it. So there is great anxiety. Uh, what do you think the uh, federal government should do beyond just saying uh, there should be an investigation and the terrorists should be identified and brought to uh, justice? And what should be the role of governors and leaders of thought uh, in the Southeast to prevent an escalation of this uh, situation? Well, let me start by saying that uh, what has happened is very, very unfortunate. Very unfortunate in the sense that uh, the Southeast uh, has not uh, been known to be this violent. Whether this is an external invasion or a collusion with uh, local elements by some invading forces or interests, thorough investigation should Reveal, But I think it is too frenetic for the IG to have jumped to the conclusion, even when it does not seem to. Some of us here, I don't know what information he has, but he needs to come uh, convincing to the people who are not seeing what he's seen, uh, that he should conclude that this is uh, the handiwork of a particular uh, group. Investigation is necessary to enable us, those of us who are even from the Southeast, to know how to uh, take steps whenever we are either in the Southeast or anywhere else for the, for the, for the matter. So the issue about uh, insecurity, because this was how this, uh, I think it was uh, Yusuf or whatever, the Boko Haram guy in uh, Medugri, the whole thing started like, like that when the police mishandled that particular incident. And this incident here now must be thoroughly and professionally handled. The IG is uh, on borrowed time, as we know. So if it was because he needed to be seen to have uh, done something or been on top of it that made him to make that uh, prejudicial announcement, uh, I think it is not helping matters either. Because if in the end it turns out that this group of people he mentioned had nothing to do with it, if you call a bad, a, 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 somebody a bad name in the public, and he says, I am not what you said I am, and you impress it on the minds of the people, that person might say, well, since I'm already like this in the public, I, I better go that way. So that is the psychology here that we need to avoid, that prejudice. Now, what can the government do? The first step, like I said, you can't solve a problem without properly defining it and understanding the variables at force. You need to understand what type of people or group 
will have the effrontery, the temerity and rashness of character to embark on this type of suicidal mission. I am told that the police headquarters in Oweri, the way it is located within the government house vicinity and uh, some other uh, security agencies are joining the, of course, the, the, the correctional center there, that it is physically impervious. So it takes somebody or a group of people who understand either the lapses or the laxity in that area to embark on this mission, or that they are armed to the teeth, such that having done this damage, they still have the capacity to repeat or replicate it somewhere else, either within the Southeast Enclave or somewhere else. It should worry the government if this kind of uh, military or maybe the arsenal in possession of uh, all those people that may have carried out this uh, <clears throat> attack, that we have such an assemblage, it portends potential danger for the region. So I think this thing should be uh, thoroughly investigated. There's no need to bring the normal uh, prejudice. You saw the uh, chairman of the tribunal, the CCT, he talked about Biafran boys. That's uh, prejudicial. So if that is the easy refrain, it makes life cheap and gives the impression that people are working, when in actual, in actual sense they are simply exacerbating the situation. So people must come from the point of knowledge of what the issues they are addressing before they make public pronouncements. That's why they are paid for. Yes, sir. You referred to the arrest and extrajudicial killing of Mohammed Yusuf, and that reminder cannot be overstated because we must not repeat the same mistakes that we're still grappling with till today. Now, regarding um, IPOB and ESN, Dr. Abati referred earlier in another segment to the statements by Emma Powerful, the spokesperson for IPOB, completely denying any involvement with this attack in Oweri. And now we've, we've seen from ISIS and ISWAP and Boko Haram, terrorist organizations do not disown attacks that they perpetrated. They tend to actually admit, and they're quite proud to admit it. However, you also know that about a week ago, the police posted videos, confessional videos, from two gentlemen who claim to be members of IPOB, and they admitted to killing police officers and killing soldiers. So these gentlemen are called Raphael Indag and Ugochuku Samuel. So there does appear to be a violent strain of people claiming to be IPOB members. What's your comment on that? My comment oh, sorry, sir, we have to take a break. I was just told we have to take a break. I'll take your comments after the break, sir. Please stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We're still with Dr. Chima Naji, a lawyer, politician, public affairs analyst, and leader of thoughts in the southeast of Nigeria. Sorry about that interruption, sir. Before we went on the break, I was asking you whether or not the police really has had a knee-jerk reaction to what happened in Oweri by um, blaming it on IPOB and ESN. Well, um, you see, that was uh, the, the reference I made to the frenetic, frenetic nature of uh, the response of the IG. Even if he has a report from Oweri, he probably was not there, so he was, he was probably acting on interim re report that needed to be queried so that he would be sure that before he comes to the public domain to make that kind of statement, then he will be sure of his facts, such that at the end of the day, he will be proven right, only with a matter of you know, greater details. So I don't think it is... Um, consistent with the critical thinking, to also think that if Mr. B stole meat yesterday and uh, tomorrow uh, yam is stolen, well, as police, you may just do arrests, but that is for purposes of investigation, because the man who stole the meat may not have been around. He may have an alibi that he wasn't even in town when the yam was stolen. Somebody may also have stolen the yam in order to hinge it on the man who stole the meat, so that the man wanted to make a porridge with uh, meat and yam. So it makes sense, you know, logically. But is it true? 
So that is the reason why investigations must be carried out in a very thorough and critical manner because anything involving Southeast evokes an unnecessary emotions in this country. And it is very, very unfair for the IG to have made that statement at this early stage of this uh, event. Nobody with right senses will like what has happened because it sends jitters even among the very people that are living in that vicinity. Not to talk about uh, those people who are also outside the uh, 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 Imo state that are also of uh, Southeastern uh, origin. So the point is that we don't know how we got here. But you remember that sometime when I was here, I said there is an external interest in Igbo land. There has been an external or external interests in Igbo land. Some of them are positive, some of them are negative. Why would the IG also uh, not look at the prospect of somebody or some group of people sponsoring invasion or local collusion to ensure that Southeast is given a bad name in its quest for uh, this uh, presidency that we're talking about? There are a lot of uh, theories that they need to look into if they are doing investigation. Leave the, 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 the investigative panel or group with the option of fanning around trying to get all the facts, pulling the facts. Be very fair, but be very firm. Do not show any prejudice. Do not show that you probably have taken a position that willy-nilly, it must be these people, and so on and so forth. But the implication there, Victoria, is that if it is true, let me just, assuming without conceding, that it was uh, the um, Eastern Security Network of IPOP that carried out this uh, attack or has been carrying out these attacks, the Nigeria police should be seriously embarrassed that a proscribed group was able to organize and do the kind of damage they did. And from the reports we have so far, there was no confrontation. Some people say they started from 1 a.m. Some people say they started from 2 something. This symbolism, this symbolism of attacking national symbols or investments is very, very, very worrisome to good citizens of this country because it gives the impression that we are not protected. That is why government should keep quiet and do a thorough investigation and come up with a watertight fact about what has happened and begin to, from that particular finding, before they even go to press, weave out options on how to address these things and begin to implement them. Because we are sick and tired of you, you go out, you are not sure of whether you are going to come back. Supposing somebody had a, a, a problem with the police and they parked the car or any of his uh, properties at the police headquarters, is that how it was going to, uh, were going to end? or that somebody is uh, in detention somewhere, and this attack happens. He has not been condemned by any judicial process, and yet he loses his life. And we all know how sometimes minor issues and skirmishes can end you up in the police station, and this is how you go. So the, 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 the situation is very worrisome and must be nipped in the board. It must be nipped in the board. There should be no sentiment. Mm. OK. I mean. A lot has been said, and uh, your analogy about uh, the meat and the yam reminded me a lot of that analogy of the goat and the yam a couple of years back. I mean, I know it's a day of words and banters and analogies with you, but I want to ask, you know, specifics. Number one, why emo? Uh, we had an incident in Orlu the other day. Uh, we've also had attacks on police stations. This is not the first time. Uh, we've, attacked, we've had like three, four attacks, correct me if I'm wrong on that, on police stations in and around that area. Why emo? And secondly, uh, we're also having attacks in other parts. Ebonito has been in the front burner of all of these attacks. The vice president was there over the weekend in Ebony State. Two attacks, I should say. Uh, the other one was about a community, internal squabbles, two communities, I think a farm area in Ebony State fighting. They said there's a business interest there or something. Why all of this all of a sudden in this part? For the first, why emo is beginning to extend. You know, the Abia State Governor said those oh, security must be tightened and the likes. 
unravel all of this for me, unpack it. Uh, the million dollar question. Why Imo? Why Southeast now? But the why and the why, why anywhere for that matter? We already had the, south, the Northeast boiling, the Northwest joined. Even the Southwest, there are skirmishes. Some of these things are imported. Now, Southeast, Hawaii Imo, that is why the police, charged with the responsibility of investigation, must put its intelligence cap without any, any prejudices or preconceptions. Even if the police or investigating panel or team has uh, any theory about what may have happened, that theory must be tested. You cannot just come out and voice something glibly and they expect that uh, you'll be given some ovation. Things don't work like that. You are, you are talking about a people. Because as we are speaking now, we don't know who is APO. I am very, very convinced I'm not a member. But who knows the next person? And this, this is the reason why it is important that before we begin to create some conditions that will make attack in the imminent or mandatory uh, as a justification, the police must do be on top of its game without uh, being seen as taking a position uh, in a very cheap manner. Because it is very cheap to say, I know the answer. You have a, a polynomial equation, in fact, quadratic. Solve for X and Y. You already have the answer. Then you ask somebody, can you look for the formula? Things don't work like that. Well, Dr. Naji, if I may uh, draw your attention again to the uh, lead story in uh, this day. Now, the story continues on page eight, and it has to do with this. It has to do with the subject we're discussing. Uh, you've accused the uh, Inspector General of Police of prejudice. Now, in that particular story in this uh, edition of this day. The uh, statement by the uh, Inspector General of Police talks about preliminary investigations, and it's very clear about that. But the part of the report that I would like to draw your attention to is in the fifth column, where the Imo State Governor, Senator Hope Uzodimma, who is a governor, who is the governor of Imo State and who is a stakeholder in that part of the country, is also quoted as saying that the attacks were politically motivated, and it particularly is quoted as saying that the primary intent of the IPOP members who carried out the attacks was to create fears in the minds of the people and to ensure the release of their comrades in custody. That is the governor of Imo State. Will you also accuse him of jumping to conclusions or of prejudice because he has nothing to, to gain from uh, you know, characterizing uh, IPOP? Now, you say prejudice is a statement when you have not had enough facts. I didn't hear or know about what the governor has said or that he has also subscribed it. I don't know what they have, okay? Now, if they have, within this short period, been able to gather enough information or facts that make them feel, because when Rufai said, why Imo? In my own thinking, I may have been thinking, ah, could it have been politically motivated? that some people in the first instance may not like the way the governor emerged? Or could it be that some people are fighting to give the Igbos a bad name because they have always been in many, in many domains that Igbos cannot organize themselves? How can they now be angling for the, the presidents that they will kill themselves? And so on and so forth. These are very facts that are everywhere. Now, if they, like I made allusion to the IG having an interim report, so why wouldn't he wait? to certify that those reports indeed, because interim reports are interim reports. You can change, anything can change, because if the lead you had before may take you to nowhere, then you are stuck. Then you look for another variable that you may find to explain the situation. They have the, the, they have the reports before them, but I am talking about the common sense approach. A lot of uh, people have been killed, a lot of uh, violence has been taking place in many places. Some of them are complex, some of them look simple, but they say they don't profile. Everybody say don't profile, let us get at the root of this matter. What we are saying is that the reason, that reason should prevail, let us not carry our hunches 
the, the, the Hope Woods Odinma is a stakeholder. He's an interested party. It is also possible that because he thinks that he's the target of the, uh, the, the attack, he also may be sentimental in that sense. Because I understand that the government house was also, uh, at, uh, they attempted to uh, touch the government house. And uh, like Rufai said, why Imo? It has been many other places, but the Imo one, nobody has seen this type of uh, thing happen in the Southeast, generally. So if it is starting from Imo, that question is valid. And that is the reason why all the forces that have anything to do with intelligence must get set loose now. Unleash the state power to get these facts and make sure they have the, the facts and go after the culprits. That is the issue. I'm not uh, interested in, uh, crime is crime. Whether you call it banditry, terrorism, or even your son that has stolen from the mother's pot has stolen. The only thing it is, uh, is developing. Yeah, he's developing to the level where he will go international, if, uh, <laughs> if he's allowed. But some people might say, hey, because he didn't have enough uh, meat, that's why he went to the port. You can never have enough of anything. So that should not uh, justify any reason for stealing. Stealing is stealing. So crime is crime. No matter the name, whether terrorism, uh, robbery, banditry, kidnapping, cattle rustling, uh, uh, henchmen attack, all of them are crime, and they are defined by law as such. So I am not interested in any party in that imbroglio. I'm interested in getting the truth so that if you saw that uh, when I was watching on social media, some young boys were shouting, look, oh, this is a police van born, you know, some of them didn't have shirt. And I was telling somebody with me, ha, how ignorant these boys were. They were before the filling station, some of them came to buy fuel. Because if police came there, we know what would have happened. They would have picked all of them. Yeah? And uh, well, at the end of the day, parade them as they haven't caught the people who burnt down these places. Well, Dr. Naji, thank you very much for joining us. We hope that uh, the redo in uh, Imo State will be a result in the best interest of all parties concerned. Thank you very much. Indeed.